Welcome back. Um, many thanks to Mustafa Al Ali for another um, great recitation of the Holy Quran. Um, his voice is is amazing way to start the show. Um, and the follow up for that is to look into supplications, du'as, um, and the literature of the Ahlul Bayt alayhi wasalam that we can take some lessons from yeah. um, that we usually don't know about. Um, yeah, and Zara, as always, we're going to be introducing um, Ibrahim Al Ansari for that. So, Ibrahim, Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. I've personally <coughs> had some amazing times with Ibrahim um, <coughs> during, during these shows, uh, and I very much look forward to the next or this episode and the next couple of episodes as well. Sure. Um, Ibrahim, Zara, tell us what are what's he, what's he going to speak about today. I'll let him. Share with us what you're going to share today. Okay, so today we're going to speak about uh, the Mab'ath of the Prophet, yes. which is um, <coughs> Mab'ath, a word in Arabic, comes from the word Ba'atha, mm. which means to send. So it was the sending of the Prophet. So um, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Prophet or sent the message uh, through the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now here there's always a mis misconception mm. yes. where a lot of people start talking about Isra and Mi'raj during Mab'ath. Right. Whereas they're completely two different dates. Yeah. They have nothing to do with each other. Okay. And Isra and Mi'raj came way after Mab'ath. What's Isra and Mi'raj just for the benefit yeah, of the Isra and Mi'raj is uh, the time where uh, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was taken uh, to Masjid al-Aqsa and up to the seventh heaven uh, until he reached the Arsh yeah. and was given knowledge of everything, let's say, and which is um, even one of the moments which Imam Zainul Abidin, uh, والسلام, when he stands in the palace of Yazid, he is proud to say that I am the son of the person who uh, was taken from a Masjid al Haram yes. to Masjid al Aqsa. Yes. Uh, yes. And, and then he carries on to say and Ibn trying to show how how yeah. close he got to the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. So this is something that uh, Imams take pride in that they are sons of this uh, Prophet. Yeah. Now so there's always this misconception of mixing the two. They are two completely different days, they have nothing to do with each Why other. Why are they mixed up? Sounds I really similar? don't know why. They're, they're not similar in any way. That's, that's, that's no, the I mean, thing. they sound similar. Mi'raj, Mab'ath, maybe. I'm date? not sure. What, what? Just because it's, it's necessarily related to the Prophet, mm. people try mm. to. Also, uh, there's some sort of angelic, kind of divine ascension going on. Yeah. Because the Mab'ath, mm. the angels, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, the angel Jibra'il is the one when he came to him and said, Iqra, right? That's, yeah. that's yeah. the Mab'ath. Yeah. Um, and then with the Isra, it's when. The, the, the Prophet was taken up towards certain levels of, of, of heaven. Yep. Yeah, and then shown different levels and then given the knowledge, as, as you mentioned. So, yep. because mm -hmm. there's something, I, I think, divine intervention related, maybe people put them two together. I'm not sure. Yeah, no, it's, yeah it's possibly, but at the end of the day, yeah. they're two different <coughs> dates uh, because at the end of the day, the Mab'ath was actually the first day in which Rasulullah was shown the angel Jibra'il alayhi of the salat, mm. uh, alayhi salam. Um, so the the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, I wouldn't say it's impossible, but of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he wanted to, he would have taken him on that at that time. But it was only after Hijrah, I believe, that he was taken up. And in fact, even within the specific dates, people try to take away the status of Fatima to Zahra. Mm. They will always try to find something. Wow. Fatima to Zahra, it was only during Isra and Mi'raj where she came, uh, where, where the Prophet reached the seventh heaven, was given a fruit, ate the fruit, and from that fruit came Fatima. Mm. So Fatima was never in the uh, in the mm. aslab of those who were before right. the Prophet yeah. wasallam, yeah. or before Khadija. And from that she came into the Prophet and came into Khadija. People, when they come to the birth of Fatima to Zahra, they say, how old was she when she passed away? They'll say she was 20-something years mm. old. We say, no, she was 18. Why? Because if you say she's 20-something, that means it was before Hijrah. Mm. And, before and that takes, that, th therefore, there's no Isra ah, and Mi'raj. I see. So, so they always try to take away the state of Fatima Zahra. So these misconceptions so are So the maximum important. her age could be was 18? 18. Because of the, because of the Isra and Mi'raj? Because of the Isra and Mi'raj, yeah. Mm. So she only came after the Isra and Mi'raj. Okay. Now, another misconception within the Mab'ath is within the actual story itself. So in the story of Mab'ath, uh, the angel Jibra'il comes to the Prophet as he was in his cave. And he says to him, Iqra, read. 
The Prophet replies, Ma ana biqari. Now the problem is, a lot of people say, when, when the Prophet said, Ma ana biqari, means I cannot read. Now if we believe that the Prophet wasallam is complete, mm. it is impossible for him to not be able to read. And for whoever says that the Prophet meant I cannot read, is a liar and not a believer. Okay. In, in the true status of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu okay. alaihi wasallam. Instead, when we look at the Arabic language, and we said, he says, he didn't say ma ana biqari, I cannot read. No, he says ma ana biqari. What do you want me to read? There's a big difference. Oh. The body language and the way you say it has a very big difference. Once someone says, can you read this to me? I cannot read. And once, can you read this to me? What do you want me to read? There's a big difference. No, but what, you, what you're saying here is that there's two different sentences. Because body in language In English, it's two different sentences Whereas in Arabic, you say What do you want me, uh, uh, read? And I say Ma ana biqari And then, but I can also say Ma ana biqari All right What okay. do you want me to okay. read? Okay. Okay. So when translating, it becomes two different sentences Because we're translating the meaning Okay But okay. the body language and the way it is said Is what decides the translation Okay It's what decides okay. the meaning That makes sense So the Prophet sallallahu he said Ma ana biqari and then after uh, three times he said اقرأ بسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق But are there narrations that he was, he was Ummi? Uh, what's the word Ummi in, in, in English? Ummi uh, cannot read or write Yeah, uh, illiterate Illiterate Yeah, wasn't yeah. Isn't there narrations that he was illiterate? He wasn't That's yeah. the thing Because if we say, so for example who is, who is better? A person who can read and write Or a person who cannot? Definitely a person who can mm. read and write. Therefore, if we say that the Prophet, that Prophet Muhammad is complete as a human, not complete in terms of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, complete as a human, he must be able to read and write. And, sorry. Yeah. No, please carry on. No, I, was, I, was gonna, yeah. I just went to the, the thought that um, isn't there a narration that Imam Ali wrote? That he would speak and that yeah. Imam would write. That's, that's different. Where if it, because when the Prophet comes, revelation would, would, would come forward and he is informing Imam Ali and he is the person in charge of his scripture does not necessarily have to mean that the Prophet cannot write. Mm. We might be sitting here together and you might be... So for example, I'm talking right now and, and Brother Ali is writing some notes based, based, based on what we are saying. Now, that is does he? not mean that I cannot <laughs> write. That doesn't mean that I can't prepare notes and give it to, yeah. to Ali. But he's writing the notes based on what I am saying. Similarly, Imam Ali. So, in these narrations that, that says that Ma ana biqara, for example, yeah. are there any little notes to say to define his body language? As in terms of notes, there are no notes. But our ulama, when they come to uh, address this issue yeah. and when they come to to talk about it, no, they prove. And in fact, it doesn't need a big alim to prove it to you. Right. Because once you believe, it, yeah. it's, it's, it makes sense. Once you believe that Prophet Muhammad is complete, yeah. he must be able to read and write. Okay. If he is complete, he must not be scared. Because, yeah. because when they say, what do you want me to read? And they portray it, yeah. specific schools of thoughts portray it as if he's so scared. What do you want mm. me to read? I don't know. He starts shaking and he runs to Khadija. Mm. And Khadija takes her to his uncle. Keeping in mind, his, the, the uncle of Khadija was Christian. Mm. And this Christian uncle of Khadija tells Prophet Muhammad, yeah. don't worry, you don't need to be scared. You're a prophet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you you're a prophet. Wow. A Christian is saying that. Why didn't he believe in Muhammad straight away? Why is Imam Ali the first person who believed in him? Mm. It doesn't the, make the sense. The way they portray him is, yeah. you know, it's yeah. like he was suicidal. He was, yeah. Like, yeah. And yeah, he yeah. was very frightened. You think? Too much for him to handle. Yeah. yeah. You know. that, that, that does not suit a character yeah. of a complete human being. It well, uh, in, 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 in some regards, I, I know that, for example, even within the Shia narrations, that the, the weight of yes. the, the words that are coming to the Prophet, I know that there were narrations that, that, that Ali would say he would look physically drained because of the, the weight that was coming towards him and he had to disseminate yeah. it. Yeah. That is one su from but one then, But then that weight, um, so when, perhaps when you see people who go into meditation and then mm. something they, they go through, it, it's actually quite... It's, you know, they, they can wake up quite faint because of the experience they've had. Now, mm. this is a spiritual experience, isn't it? Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, Gibraltar yeah. is not coming as a physical form. There's, there's communication between them. And, and obviously, it's in a physical body, in a human being's body. Mm. Um, that would be overwhelming in its, in its own sense, wouldn't it? So you can understand why he would feel, look pale if that's how they say yeah. that he's yeah. pale. But yeah. I don't think, I, the thing my is, heart couldn't believe that it's because he couldn't handle it. Even, yeah. even the, whole, the whole idea of, of, of him turning pale. So, for example, 
we have in our narrations that uh, Imam Zainul Abidin, Imam Sa'id, all our Imams, when they come towards Salah, before they come towards Salah, when they are performing wudu, they, they start shaking, yeah. their face goes pale. Does that is does that mean that they're that, that they're weak? No. no, it's because they know who they exactly. know who are facing. Similarly, when Jibra'il comes down with the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We take the Quran lightly. We hold the Quran yeah, 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 in our yeah. hands. It's the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. These words when because Prophet Muhammad knew Allah properly, he feels the weight of these words. We don't feel the weight because yeah, we've got Allah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, They're just words to us. It's the words to us. We don't know the true meaning. That's why the Prophet says, Ya Ali, ma araf Allah illa ana wa ant. Mm. Oh Ali, no one knows Allah but me and you. And no one knows me but Allah and you. And no one knows you but Allah and I. Allah. So only because he knows the true status of what is coming down to him, does he turn this pill. That doesn't mean he's weak. No. Doesn't mean he's scared of what's coming towards him. Mm -hmm. And most definitely does not mean that he's illiterate. Mm. Because otherwise he is not complete. It is similarly when... Um, the French philosopher Descartes, he tries to prove the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, or God to him as he was Christian. He comes and he says, there's a triangle. If it is missing one of the sides, is it still a triangle? No, no it is not. Similarly with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you think of Allah, he is perfect. If he does not exist, does that take away perfection? No. If he only exists in the mind. So he says, if he only exists in the mind and does not exist in reality, is he perfect? No, he has to exist both in the mind and in reality. Therefore, Allah exists. Okay. Similarly here, we're saying that the Prophet Muhammad is perfect. For him to be perfect, he must be brave and literate. If he does not have these two qualities, he's not, he's not perfect anymore. Mm. The triangle, if it's not 180 degrees and three sides, it's not a triangle. Yeah. Wow, we're getting a math lesson. Okay, well. brilliant. <laughs> well, look, I, I, we've, I, I would love to talk further about this, yes. um, but there is a specific uh, <laughs> ziyara or yeah. dua or du uh, yeah, dua. So, what is this dua? Yeah, that was very beautiful. Where, where is where does it come from? What is it? Tell um, us about the dua. So, uh, on the day of Mabad, there are many amal that we can do. If we mm. open Fatiha Jinan, there's literally a few pages: um, with, uh, tasbihat, turakat prayers. Uh, specific ad'iyah One of those is this dua that I chose today So should we recite it? Yes, inshallah? Bismillah <coughs> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad <coughs> Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah Wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh Wa ashhadu anna ka rasoolullah Wa anna ka Muhammad ibn abdillah وأشهد أنك قد بلغت رسالات ربك وأشهد أنك قد بلغت رسالات ربك ونصحت لأمتك وجاهدت في سبيل الله وعبدت الله حتى أتاك اليقين بالحكمة والموعظة الحسنة وأديت الذي عليك من الحق وأنك قد رأفت بالمؤمنين وغلظت على الكافرين فبلغ الله بك أفضل شرف محل المكرمين الحمد لله الذي استنقذنا بك من الشرك والضلال اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد In the final couple of minutes that we have um, what, what, where is this from? Is it a dua or is it a ziyara? It is, it is uh, from the ziyara of the Prophet mm. on the day of Mab'ath. Okay. Um, so part of it is, is you, you are um, uh, saying that you bear witness that there is no, uh, no God but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, that uh, Muhammad is the servant of Allah and his messenger. And then it talks about his uh, message. So after he says, uh, so first he says, وَأَشَهَدُ أَنَّكَ قَدْ بَلَّغْتَ رسالات ربك. He didn't say وأشهد أنك قد بلغت رسالة ربك. No, because Prophet Muhammad, when he was sent on the Mabath, when when the religion and he was sent as a mercy to mankind, he came to fulfill all the messages of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, starting oh, from Adam, brilliant, wow. all the way to the Prophet Muhammad. That is brilliant. And of course, he talks about um, how uh, how he did so. نصحت لأمتك. وَجَاهَدْتَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَعَبَدْتَ اللَّهِ حَتَىٰ أَتَاكَ الْيَقِينِ You, you, you obeyed Allah until certainty came upon, upon you. 
بالحكمة والموعظة الحسنة. Sorry, you want to say something? No, 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 no. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated. Go on, please. Yeah, بالحكمة <laughs> والموعظة الحسنة. So you'd, you'd always talk in, 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 in kindness. وأديت الذي عليك من الحق. You fulfilled everything that you had to from truth, uh, from truthfulness. وأنك قد رأفت بالمؤمنين. And you treated them properly and nicely and, and with kindness. وغلظت على الكافرين فبلغ الله بك أفضل شرف محل المكرمين. So Allah raised your status to the best of statuses that, that uh, one could reach. And then you say, this is where you relate back to yourself. Realize always relation back to oneself. Alhamdulillah. All praise be, be to Allah. Alladhi istanqadhana min al-shirki wa dhalala. Who saved us through you from polytheism, polytheism and going astray. Mm. That is brilliant. I think that one point there just really hit home um, and how he is the Khatim, the, the, the last messenger of Allah. Um, risalati. I actually haven't noticed that. I, I knew the Risalati. We would always say Risalati, but actually yeah. means all of the messages yeah. that Allah has sent through all of the prophets. Yeah. And you are the one that says what? Uh, uh, قَدْ بَلَّغْتَ رِسَالَاتِ رَبِّكْ yeah. So you're the one that has or is going to or has بَلَّغْتَ بَلَّغْتَ So you you've, have. You've, you've, you've yeah. given all of the messages yeah. Not just that message that I've given no, no, to you now Everything That's brilliant This is the final message The message of Islam Which combines every single message Every single religion into one Which is suitable for the era of the Prophet Our era and any era to come Until the Day of Judgment I'd love to recap everything but I think there was, there's, there's a lot to recap on. <laughs> I've made notes, but um, yeah. I but it's beautiful because it reminds me of the ayah of Quran where it says, that I, you know, on Ghadir when Allah says, that I've completed yeah. your religion. Yeah. And you think that he was the completion, wasn't he? Definitely. All that. So, um, I mean, I think we should recite salawat just in his mercy. Allah Allah Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Muhammad. Thank you so Brilliant. much. I just, so you have just so much love pouring out for the Prophet. Yeah. Morning. He's just such a beautiful creation. You think... You know, we could have been bought, born in any era, and yet we are born in the time that we are. Like as this dua finishes, that we are saved through the polytheism and going astray. Yeah. So you say, Alhamdulillah, Allah is tanqadana bik. Through you, we were yeah. saved. Definitely. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much. Another wonderful. Thank you very much. Morning. Uh, yeah. So we can carry on, um, but unfortunately we can't, um, and our time with Ibrahim is 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 over for now. Uh, please stay tuned in the next couple of episodes We'll be talking more about um, The supplications and the du'as um, Of the Ahl al-Bayt Alayhi From here on in uh, It will be Zara Who will be with um, our, our esteemed brother Brother Bilal On the specialist segment So um, please stay tuned